Okay, now let's turn our attention to Victoria Welby's text, What is Meaning? Studies in the Development of Significance. We can see by looking at the title page that this text was published in London and New York in 1903. And we also um, get an epigraph here, which sets the tone or the mood for the work to follow. This one, it looks like a Bible verse that says, And in that day, the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So we have this theme of sight and seeing. Um, after that, we have a dedication page, which also sort of sets the purpose and the goal of this text. So she dedicates this to her grandson and says, in the hope that he may live to see what is real, more worthily expressed and understood, so that when we know better what true meaning is, the world of signs may be fuller of sense and signify more than it ever has done yet. So we can see a little glimpse of this writer's style by reading her dedication. And we can see and notice a lot of, uh, it looks like alliteration, a lot of wordplay um, kind of going on. Um, so it kind of gives us a taste of what we're gonna see. Looking ahead at the first part of the assignment is the preface. Um, and just to break down the word preface, like pre and face. So we should look at this before we face the text itself. Um, so she offers a few words of explanation. She kind of gives us an excuse a little bit. She says, you know, it's really problematic to talk about the problems with language and the problems with meaning because I have to use this flawed system of language and meaning to express the critique. Uh, so I think she's just asking us not to judge her for speaking maybe a little bit unclearly or using idioms and metaphors. Um, you can judge what her message is as you read the text itself. Um, and then she says, it's not only language that's a problem, education is a problem too. So she's critiquing two systems. Um, she says um, on page, oh, it's Roman numerals, uh, V-I-I-I, -I -I. this must be eight. Okay, she says on page eight of the preface um, that basically she's not some special language genius. Um, who's responsible for solving all of these problems, but actually language is everybody's domain. It's everybody's problem to solve. Um, she calls her study or her project um, significs, which is um, an interesting word. Um, I'm not sure if she made it herself or if she found it through citation somewhere. Um, but she's saying that signific significs or the study of language is a universal and an ongoing problem. So um, this was 1903. Maybe we can see what we think if this is a universal and ongoing problem for us in 2020 as well. Turning the page over to page 9, IX of the preface, um, she talks a little bit about how um, numbers and the alphabet must have seemed like they were made up by some special geniuses at the time that they were invented. However, nowadays they're very common. They're taken for granted and they're seen as universal tools for communication. Um, then at the bottom paragraph, she's saying, you know, this book is just a starting point for the study of significs. Um, and then she sort of offers us a, a further excuse for her work saying, you know, yes, this text is uh, short on examples. However, she's sure that we'll be able to think of examples um, from our own lives and experience as we read her work. Um, so that was the preface. It just, the author is telling us a little bit about her work before we begin. It seems like she's offering a few excuses. Uh, maybe trying to ask us not to um, critique this work as somehow incomplete or somehow irrelevant. Um, so let's see what she gets into in chapter one. 
Um, chapter one, page one, no title, just the chapter. Let's see, uh, the very first thing she mentions is an appeal to authority, speaking about an article that she read in the psychology journal, Mind. Um, so it begins with an appeal to ethos, sets the context. Um, she tells us, nobody really seems to be studying the nature of meaning and the nature of interpretation. So that's um, her contribution to the scholarships. She has identified a gap or something that's missing, and her work is going to fill that gap or address that missing puzzle piece. Um, she links it to the context of philosophy, science, logic, and psychology. Um, one thing that's really important to notice as you're reading any um, expository text is to really um, keep track of the difference between what the author's argument is and what kind of sources or references he or she is bringing in. So it's really important to point out that this beginning of chapter one is um, a summary of an article that she read. So the first one to basically two and a half pages of this um, chapter are just summary. She's summarizing the article that she mentions. In that article, um, it says the language um, really struggles to adapt itself to the changing demands of society. Um, and we can't solve that problem just by increasing our precise definitions. Um, language is naturally an ambiguous system. So coming up with layers and layers and layers of definition won't solve the problem the problem that um, language isn't adapting to society's needs. And the article also mentions uh, sense, meaning, and significance, which are the three key words for the entire chapter, um, saying that not only is a new language system needed, but we also need a new education system. And remember, this is the article that she's summarizing. Um, it claims that uh, current education is sickening society by removing its instinct toward curiosity and playfulness. Um, and then the summary ends at the very end of page three. Uh, the sentence that says, the article now summarized was of course written under advice with reference only to psychology and philosophy. So this phrase is a signaling transition phrase that the author is switching from the they say portion where she's calling on existing sources into the I say portion of her argument where she's now gonna talk about her views on the matter. Um, so let's look at page four. At the top of page four, she names her project Signifix. Um, giving it that that interesting name that really pings on the meaning of sign, signifier, signifies, significance. Um, say, and she says again that it's a universally applicable um, project. And then she lays out her purpose, which she hopes to clarify these distinctions. So these layers of meaning. Um, remember her title was um, what is meaning studies in the development of significance. So she's really breaking meaning down into these three um, terms, sense, meaning, and significance. So looking over at page five, after she talks a little bit about the sense of meaning, um, she tells us, you know, she's not just playing around. This isn't just wordplay for her. She's really trying to break this concept into meaningful components. Um, and then she talks about the sense of a word being its function or its use value. So how we use a word, what we intend it to mean. Um, she says on page six, um, the author says, that um, you know the human purpose is to really learn to signify, to express yourself is the kind of core of being a human. And all of that 
expression is rooted in your senses. So those five senses that you use to experience the world. Um, for this author, those are the, uh, the roots to expression and meaning and communication. Um, at the bottom of page six, the author links, um, links experience to clear and precise use of symbolism. Changing over to page seven, um, the author is now bringing up the natural sciences. Um, the link between the study of meaning and science is uh, seeming to really key into the fact that the physical sciences are based in observation and based in experience. Um, and the purpose is to really um, gather meaning from observation and experience. Um, over to page eight, um, saying even more broadly that Signifix embodies all the disciplines, so it crosses all over all disciplinary lines. Um, and then there are a few examples. There's kind of this contrast between um, what she sort of figures as the man of action or the man in the streets, kind of like the practical businessman who's taking care of things, checking off the to-do list, um, versus the man of thought, the man who's in his study or his laboratory, um, who's really pondering deeply and taking the time to think things through. So there's a little bit of um, a narr narration here in a way. And then we have, she references um, the poet. So um, talking about poetic language um, and all of these figures that she's mentioning, all of these characters um, can kind of recognize these problems with language. Um, and then looking at page nine, the author um, just before she made a clear connection between the um, precision of language and detail for experience. And now she's making a connection to um, the language and meanings impact on imagination. So we have these two uh, real world experience versus um, imagination and creativity. Both of them are strongly linked to the need to understand meaning in all of its layers and complexity. At the bottom of page nine, the author is saying, um, claiming we need to spend more attention toward understanding expression. And we need to really, as a society, elevate our powers to express. Um, page 10, uh, we have uh, kind of her remarks about definition. Um, so she's kind of responding to that summary that she started with, saying that um, definition isn't going to be the answer to understanding meaning. You can't define your way out of this problem. Um, definition doesn't equal understanding. In fact, to understand meaning, you have to pay attention to the context and to the associations that words carry. Um, and then uh, she ends page 10 talking about the overall importance of meaning for humanity and for our experience of life on earth. Um, and then if we look back um, over to page 11, the end of the chapter, um, the final remark is um, the context for literature, uh, philosophy, science, politics, and business, um, saying that no matter what field you're in, no matter what discipline you are pursuing, um, this uh, study of language, the study of meaning is of utmost importance um, at a kind of human level.